Goldilocks tries to interview Loki, who at least is polite when he blows her off in four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, highlight reel of uh, Loki and AJ Styles' big moves, the Dragon Clutch, the Key Crusher 99, the Styles Clash, and the Spiral Tap. And it's time for Loki versus AJ Styles. Man, I watched this match, and I was like, I can't figure out if I have respect for you two or not. Like, they worked so hard. They hit each other really hard. On this total piece of shit show. It's like, God. They went out there, and they just worked their asses off, and they had a great match, and it was... This was the best thing on the show, not the opener. Oh, easy. I mean, they... Yeah, you're right. They, you're had, right. A, they had an awesome match. But, God, it was in the middle of such a pile of total shit that it was like... I can't even take it seriously. Like, how can you take this seriously after watching an hour what we just watched? You can't. There's um, there's that story. You know, Buddy Wayne was on the ring apron, and his partner went for the hot tag, and he slapped his hand really hard, and and Buddy just looked at his hand and contemplated leaving the building, yeah. professional wrestling, yes, entirely. Yeah. I I just imagined Buddy taking one kick from low key. And I'm never, ever, ever wanting to wrestle ever again. That's about right. That's about right. And AJ is uh, no uh, delicate flower either. Oh, has he not laid on was, anybody? God, not a delicate Sheesh. flower at all. Jiminy Christmas. So these two guys are beating the shit out of each other, and yeah. there's a disturbance in the crowd, and everyone is standing up and facing the other direction. So all you see are backs while these guys are killing each other. And then the crowd sweetening hits, so these backs are now cheering loudly, and then they finally get back into the match, and then there's a second disturbance, and everyone turns around again, and the director smartens up and just starts using the camera that just shows the wrestlers and no fans, and the sweetening is super loud, and it fucked up this entire match. It was... Her it yeah. So they're hitting each other really hard, they're doing cool moves, but it's all totally random. There's no heat, there's no comeback, it's just stuff happening. And eventually... Loki tries some kind of flip. AJ catches him, hits a Styles Clash, and wins. Like, it was good, but it was not as good as you would think, and it was not good enough to save this show. Nothing could have saved this show. So, of course, Jerry Lynn attacks AJ Styles, his tag team partner. Pile drive him, does a few ladder spots, because it's not like we saw a ladder match in the opener. He beats him up so bad, the crowd begins to chant, Jerry Lynn, Jerry Lynn. They have no idea what's going on. Nor should they. Nor should they. And uh, they're asking, will this team last? Will they forfeit the tag titles? Will they last? They've already <laughs> broken up. Well, they're still champions. I know that, but fuck. But Tanae asks, will they forfeit the tag titles? And it says, well, if you forfeit them now, you can get it back later. That sounds easy. Sure. And granted, in this tag division, me and Sean could probably win these belts. <laughs> All right. We're going to run down the car for next week. Did you just insult me? No. <laughs> it sounded like it. Well, I'm going to run down the car for next week. Before I do, I need to remind you, every show costs 10 bucks. $10 you must take out of your account and give it to the Campbell Company to watch. I did oh, the, I remember. Uh, I did the math, by the way. Uh, this would be $16.78 today okay. for each of these shows. Okay. But you still got to take the time to order it and pay and watch it. Here is the full advertised card for next week's show. Sabu versus Ken Shamrock in a ladder match with submissions. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> ladder match with submissions. Yes. Right. You, you can climb the ladder and win. Or, or you can just submit the other or person. Or you just choke him out. Okay, wow. Well, cool. And also, not making this up, we'll also have X Division competition as well. That's it! That's the full card for next week. They can't even say it'll be AJ versus the number fucking two contender. I mean, is it that hard? They've already forgotten, haven't they? We're never going to get this. these no. guys getting their championship match. No. Brian Lawler versus Scott Hall in your main event. Lawler <laughs> comes out for a promo. I defended last week's promo. Vinny, God not, damn. <laughs> I'm not defending this one. The no. most horrible thing in this promo, the most, the most amazingly, I, I can't even believe this occurred. So he's running down Jerry Lawler, and he's talking about how Jerry's had three wives or whatever. Everybody cheers. He goes, every single one of them was younger than me. All the crowd cheers. And then he has to do the line about how, you know, and, he, and by the way, he goes, this is a shoot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I left a ticket for Jerry the King Lawler. 
so he could come and see his son wrestle. Mm-hmm. But he didn't pick it up. And then I remembered, it's Wednesday, and he's over at the high school with like a bag full of candy. And then, it's not even that line. It's Ed Farrar then says, what kind of yeah. candy is it? <laughs> yeah. What? kind of candy is he using when he goes to the high school yeah, on a well, Wednesday night? Ed Ed's Ferraro taking notes. wants to know what kind of candy well, I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> Bro! Ed, Ed is, is making a trap. He's got a stick and a box and he's going to put a uh, candy there and he's going to catch himself Jesus. A, uh, a teenager. Essentially, yes. He called his dad a pedophile, and Ned Ferrara raised his hand and said, me too. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So he c- continues. He says, I've got a story about Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, and Vince McMahon. And then he is interrupted by Scott Hall's music. And the announcers are all, God damn it, I want to hear this fucking story. Fuck, the baby face is here. I want to hear what this heel was saying. God damn it. So Scott Hall comes out from the crowd... And he's behind Brian Lawler. <laughs> and, okay, we can see this coming. Brian Lawler's going to run his mouth for 20 seconds. No. And he'll turn around and get punched and we'll start. Bro, this quickly became the best thing on the show. <laughs> because I was fucking dying. I was like, who here hates Scott Hall? Like, there's <laughs> this has to be a rib. Like, this poor fucker is standing behind him. And it's funny because, like, you know, Scott Hall, he stands, he kind of goes like, he kind of moves his feet. He's ready to strike for a minute. he's standing behind him like this. And he's standing behind him. And he's getting ready. And Lawler keeps talking. And so he's going like this. And he keeps doing it. Like, five fucking minutes. And finally, he's just like, he just puts his hands down. And he just stands there. And he's behind the guy. It's, it's and leg- he's waiting. Legitimately two minutes before he gets in the, he gets in the ring. God fucking damn it. I was starts. dying. I was like, it, it, the, the funny thing was it got funnier the longer it went. I yes. disagree. I was like, are you going to do this for like 15 straight minutes here? Because there is 15 minutes left in this show. Like, are you ever going to fucking turn around? And finally turns around and he got hit. I was, I just, I was <laughs> fuck this show. So they're brawling on the floor. They're using fans' purses as weapons. It's all kicky punchy stuff. Uh, Lawler eventually gets slammed off the top, and Hall makes a very slow comeback, and then uh, K Crush attacks for a DQ. And uh, oh no, no, excuse me, K Crush hits the ring. It's not a DQ. Uh, Hall hits the outsider's edge on Lawler and wins in eight minutes. The polite thing to say about this match is that it was adequate. So the heels are working over Scott Hall, and who should come out to lay down the law? But Bullet Bob Armstrong. Because you know what this place needed? Another legend to be an authority figure. There's like six of them now. Uh, Scott Hall is stretched out of the ring. The second stretcher job in the last hour, actually. And then, as he's being stretched out, he is attacked by Jeff Jarrett, who has stuck back into the building. How has he stuck into the back of the building, you ask? Well, they explain. He dressed as a paramedic. <laughs> so by putting on a different shirt... It was funny because he didn't Jeff look like a paramedic Jarrett, at all. Jeff Jarrett, who by this point had already been at multiple world champions and pay-per-view main events and all this, no one in his own company recognized him because he put a different shirt on, and he comes out and hits everyone with chairs. You know, I do got to say one positive about this. Besides the comedy of, uh, of Scott Hall standing there for three straight fucking minutes or whatever, is I will say that when, when uh, Brian Christopher finally turned around... And uh, Scott Hall starts beating him. Brian Christopher's selling of this was so fucking great, including the spot where he took a big Scott Hall right hand and he leaped into the air to land back first on the top rope to do a flip bump to the fucking outside. That was unbelievable. Match itself went a long ass time and Scott was getting real tired again. And uh, he he managed to survive, but it was uh, it's just like fuck you know they're trying to they have this x division but instead it's like well who's and you know what's funny about it too is like who gives a fuck who mains of main events there's no ratings you either buy the show or you don't 
So if your best match is the X Division, why don't you put that fucking thing on last? Oh, because you have to shoot a Jeff Jarrett angle? Why does that have to be last? Like, it doesn't matter the order of this shit. You should at least put something good on at the end of the show. So the show goes off the end, and you're like, Ah, fuck, you know, that one's so bad. God damn, we saw AJ and the low-key having a good match. Fuck. Instead, it's a long-ass Brian Christopher-Scott Hall match. Scott Hall's exhausted. They do a bunch of shit. And then here comes Jeff Jarrett with a fucking chair. He's beaning everybody in the head. Unprotected chair shots to the head. He's fucking killing so many guys. The crowd starts cheering for him because he's like playing Steve Austin, even though he's a heel. This show fucking blows. And you know what? It blew in 2002. And I remember I had all these people telling me that the show was great. They're they're doing great business. Meanwhile, they're going out of business. And then I, you know, I, I don't know if it was like the first show. I'd have to go back to figure fours. But I said something like, there ain't no way that this this place is lasting three months. There's no way. There is absolutely no way it's lasting three months. And, uh, of course, it's still around today. But the key is that this version of TNA did not last three months. They were losing their ass. They were about to fucking fold. And, uh, you know, Dixie Carter was uh, working, I forget, travel or whatever. And uh, she goes, you know, my dad's got money, Panda. And so she talked to her dad, and he fucking bought the place. It's the only reason they survived. For those guys, how did this thing survive? How did it survive? Well, three months in, they almost didn't survive. They were done. They were finished. And they found Dixie. That's how this thing survived. When Brian told me he wanted me to purchase these pay-per-views and then we would make a Friday night out of it, he said, it'll be cool. I bet you it only lasts, like, maybe two and a half months. Yep. Exactly. And here we are. Well, can blame Panda Energy for that. They needed some sort of write-off. Damn pandas! Yeah, these pandas have caused a lot of trouble in this wrestling industry, haven't they? Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.